Miss Renee here. Um, it is time to get twisted today. We're going to be making this cute little pleated skirt. I'm going to give you the instructions on how to cut the pattern out and how to sew step by step. So you guys stay tuned. The first things we need to do to get started on making this little pleated skirt is we need to cut our fabric out. And I'm not making a pattern because this is fairly easy. It's just four pieces of fabric. Um, for the top band of the skirt, we want two pieces that are 16 inches long. And I actually have this fabric on the fold, but I'm going to cut through that fold after I cut these pieces. So I'm measuring 16 and marking it with the chalk. I just want to mark down far enough that I can make it. I know you probably can't see my chalk lines on here. And I'm sorry about that, but now I'm going to take the ruler and where I have my chalk lines, I'm going to just go ahead and mark that. And then I want to make it eight inches from the top of the fabric so that it'll be eight inches wide, the top portion of the skirt. Now we have one whole piece for our top band, but like I said, I wanna do it in two pieces, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna cut off this cut through that fold. So now I've got two pieces that are 16 inches long by 8 inches wide for the top portion of the skirt. So this I'm going to fold over because I'm making two pieces and I'm not going to cut the fold out of these. I'm going to cut it on the fold. I want to be sure that I line up this fold right here. It's going to be 32 inches wide for each piece. That means when you open up that fold, you've got a full length, um, 32 inches. So I'm going to mark this off. And then I want to make this one about six and a half inches wide. Okay, so now you see I could fold this open and I have one wide piece, but I want two pieces, so I'm going to cut that fold long ways. And I'm going to leave the folded pieces. I'm not going to cut through these pieces right here. So I have two pieces that are 32 inches long by six and a half inches wide. The pieces you'll need to make this skirt are, you're going to need two pieces cut on the fold with the fold still intact that are 32 inches wide or long by six and a half inches wide and then you need two pieces that are 16 inches long by eight inches wide so um so the first thing we want to do with this bottom pleated piece is we want to go ahead and mark off the middle which is pretty easy to find because the fabric is fold it on the middle of it so so we're gonna from that middle line which I don't know if you can see it there let's I went and grabbed the lighter chalk too we're gonna start marking two inches and we're gonna do two pleats on each side from the middle so we're actually gonna need six um, marks all together to each two inches apart what I'm going to do is use this little pencil here, this fabric pencil. I just, it's better to use something narrow like that. I'm sorry guys, like I said, I'm a little out of my element today because of the moving my workspace around. <laughs> so yeah, it's best to use a pencil or something. You can actually just use a regular old pencil. Just don't make your marks too far down. 
because they will show if you do. So we're wanting to do one, two, three, we're, we're making six marks basically. And I've seen others do this from the end of the fabric and I tried it that way the other night when I was practicing this and it leaves you with uneven ends and which it will, when you put the skirt together will make the um, pleats not line up. So the back wouldn't line up with the front. So you don't want to do that. You want to start from the middle of the fabric and work your way over. So we have one, two, three, four. Five, six marks. Now, you guys, I, don't, I know you probably can't see it, but I can see my marks there. See, I've got one there, I've got one there, one there, one there. And, but anyway, there's six marks on that side. And then we're going to do the exact same thing on this side. And that's, I recommend using one of these square rulers, the uh, quilting ruler or whatever it is called because I just like them because they're clear. You can see through them and it's easier to get things all squared up and even. These fabric markers or fabric pencils, they, they wash out really easy too. So... Um, don't be afraid to use one of them. You can always launder the garment after you've created it if you want to get those marks off. So then again, we've got one, two, three, four, five. I don't even know if I did that last one on camera. And six. So we have six marks on this side from the center and six marks on this side from the center. Now what I want to do, just to make sure that I line everything up, you know, in the finished product, what I'm going to do is just take this second piece and I want to lay it evenly over the top of the first piece. And I know you can't see the whole thing here because of the limited space on the little viewfinder on the camera there. But anyway, so I've, I can see all my marks here. And what I'm doing is I'm going to copy those marks onto this one. You just want to make sure that they're both laying even, that you've got both pieces of fabric lined up evenly. I lost myself for a minute there. Okay. So I've got those marks on that side. And I want to do these marks on this side. And I'm just lining them right up together. That mark on this fabric is touching the mark that I'm making on the new piece of fabric on the second piece of fabric okay so we've got all our marks and I know you guys probably can't see them very well but they're there um probably should have used a lighter piece of fabric or something I don't know what I was thinking now our next step is going to be to get our pins out and we want to put one of the pieces of fabric aside. Now I've got my center point here. Okay, so you want to take that, that first mark, not the middle mark, the first one from the middle and you want to touch it to the second mark from the middle. And you're going to have them just touching, just overlapping just like that. And you want to take a pin and put it at that fold where the marks are touching. And then you see how this is in the back. I found from experience that it's best to go ahead and pin that down too. Or else when you go to sew it, it's going to bunch up and things won't be nice and pretty and even on the back side. So then I pin that, that first mark to that second mark. Now I'm going to take this third mark. 
and I'm going to just touch that first mark so that they're both covering the, the middle mark there. And same deal, we're going to pin it. Okay, so now we have this fourth mark down here and the fifth mark right here. And I want to touch the fourth mark to the fifth mark. And then I want to make sure that I pin that fold that's in the back so that it doesn't bunch up. And then we're going to take this sixth mark and touch it to the fourth mark covering up the fifth mark. Does that make sense? Am I marking too much? And then we're going to pin this back fold down so that it doesn't move. Okay, so that's one side with our pretty little pleats on it. Now the next thing I want to do is go to this side. Skip. Remember to skip over the middle mark. That's just a mark to show you where the middle is. And I'm going to go to the second mark from the left, my left. And I'm going to touch it to the third mark. I almost couldn't find the third mark. This gray fabric on gray pencil. Okay. Alright, I've got both of those pinned down. Now I'm going to go to this third mark from the center, not the center mark. I know I keep telling you guys that, but some people skip through videos and they miss something and then they blame it on the video maker. So anyway, third mark from the center to my left, touching the second or the middle and the first mark. I'm making sure that I've got it all lined up correctly and pinning both the front and the back so that it doesn't shift around. All right, now we're going to this fourth mark, which is right here, and I'm going to touch this fifth mark from my left with it. Placing a pin to hold this one in front and the one in back. It seems complicated, but it's really not. I actually thought these doing these pleats were a little complicated myself. There are some pleats that I, I looked up that I, I probably will have to practice, but these are just seem like the most simple ones. And you can use this to make your daughter a little cheerleading outfit or just a cute little skirt. I think this would be really pretty in plaids, but I didn't have any plaids, so... I'm just using this pretty little piece of fabric that I had left over. All right, so there we've got our first one, and I'm going to go ahead and pin the second one, and then we'll go over to the machine, and I'll show you the steps you need to do to get this together. So you see I have both of my skirt pieces pinned. Now we need to go over to the machine and tack all this down. So starting from the top and starting kind of over away from this back fold so that you make sure you get over it, we're going to do just right along the edge, maybe a little, a quarter of an inch, a little less. I think it's about a quarter. And I'm setting my machine on medium speed, 3.0 stitch length, and lightweight fabric. Cover these pleats very carefully, making sure that nothing gets bunched up. Same deal with this second piece. I'm 
Okay guys, I got you sideways here, but I think you can see what I'm doing. So I've taken the pins out of my pleated skirt pieces. And the next thing I wanna do is press these down and make these pleats nice and pretty. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a top piece and a bottom piece of this skirt and I'm gonna lay them with right sides facing together. So I'm gonna do both sections of the skirt like this and I'm just gonna sew down here doing about a half an inch seam allowance. All right, y'all, hopefully this video hasn't been too confusing. I'm just trying to get used to this new work area. Okay, so I've got the bottom portion and the top portion pinned together and I'm just gonna sew all the way down and I'm using a 2.5 stitch length and medium speed. Okay, so you see we've got our bottoms and our tops connected together. Now we just want to pull this flat and press it down. Now we have the pieces pressed. What we want to do is lay them right sides facing together. Um, what I want to do is, do not really, you don't need to do a lot of pinning here, but I'm going to pin and match up these folds. And I've got the um, or seam allowances. I've got the seam going up. Just, I don't know why, but that seems to not be as bulky whenever I do a project like this. So I want to make sure that my seams are lined up. I'm going to pin that down. And then I'm just going to sew along each side. So I'm going to sew down this side, sew down this side. So you can see I've got the side seams on. And I went on before I did that and I pressed down a little, um, about a half an inch seam allowance so I wouldn't have a raw edge for the elastic. You can do that or you, you know, if you have a serger, you can serge the ends or use a tight zigzag. What we need to do is get a piece of elastic, about 21 inches for a four to five year old little girl. So the first thing I need to do before I can put the elastic in is make an elastic casing. I'm gonna leave a little over an inch. The elastic is an inch wide, but you don't want it to be exactly an inch because it's not gonna fit. And I like to start by lining up the, the seam allowance to itself. And then that way I know that I'm sewing a straight edge. And I'm gonna sew right on the edge of this and the best way to do it, if you're not going to press it to make sure that it, it's even, is to kind of pull this out this way and give it a little pull. Not too much. You see how it can get crooked, but you just want to pull it down towards the table and towards the machine. And it gives you an idea that it's going to lay nice and flat. So I'm going to sew all the way around this and I'm going to leave a little opening for feeding the elastic. because you don't really need me to feed the elastic through on camera. I'm going to, I probably should have pressed down these seams and I could still go in and do it. But now I'm gonna make the hem. And the way I like to do the hem is just double fold it over. I can't do those fancy schmancy blind hems and all that crap. feed the elastic into the casing, sew the elastic together, close up the opening where I fed it through, and then I'll bring everything back and press it and make sure it's nice and neat, and I'll show you the finished results. Alrighty, y'all. So I wanted to come and show you how this cute little skirt turned out. 
if you didn't see all of the last clip where I was doing the hem, I just did a double fold over. I uh, sewed the first one down and then I folded it over itself and sewed it on there. And then I fed the elastic through and I um, closed up that, sewed the end pieces of the elastic together and then I closed up the, the hole that I made to feed it through. So all in all, it turned out pretty neat. I still haven't um, gone back and pressed everything down because when I made that hem, it kind of opened some things back up and I'm gonna take it and press it all down. And you can't see what I'm doing, but yeah, I kind of feel like this needs a little bit of pressing. So I'm going to do that, and then it'll be complete. And um, I guess one of my granddaughters will have a new skirt. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this little tutorial. And I would say the way that I figured out my measurements to get this bottom part to fit the top part just right, what I did was this is, I cut at 32 inches. This I cut well, this I cut at 16 inches, two pieces, which is 32 inches. And these I cut, um, did I say 32 at the beginning of the video? I'm pretty sure I did. 32 inches for these. And then, so pretty much want to cut one piece of the bottom piece, the size of a doubled top piece. So whatever you cut the one piece for the back in the front you would double this piece down here for the um, the pleats and that's if you're doing um four pleats the way i did and four pleats equals six lines on each side which are two inches apart if you do it any other way one inch inch and a half three inches apart you're going to need to do some different measuring so it's kind of hard for me to explain but i can just like i'm one of those people i can do math in my head but i can't explain to you how i did it so I apologize. That's why sometimes I just can't tell you how to break down that measurement. But that's pretty much um, how I figured it in my head. I was just kind of sitting there um, playing it out in my head. And I was like, okay, if I do these plates and it's going to be this many and it's going to be this big. And it turned out right. So, um, you know, I'm just not really good at explaining that part of how I figure it out. So anyway, that is our little pleated skirt tutorial, and I really hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to um, subscribe to my channel and like this video and share it with your friends. And peace, y'all. Bye-bye.